Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how you can overclock and underclock your Nintendo Switch using a homebrew application called SysCLK. Altering your Switch's clock speeds can have significant advantages including better performance in more demanding games and better battery life in less demanding applications. This works because not all applications on your Switch will evenly utilize the power that the Switch has available, so by limiting the clock speeds in less demanding titles you can increase battery life and by raising Using the clock speeds in more demanding games, you can increase the frame rate and performance of that game. So like I mentioned, this is a homebrew application, so in order to use this you are going to need Atmosphere installed on your Switch. I'm going to have a link in the video description to a guide that will teach you step by step how to install Atmosphere on your Switch, and once you've got that installed you can come back to this video and we can get started on this. So to start off with this, there's just a few things we need to download. I'm going to have all these links in the video description as always. So you can just go there and get all of these. So I'm just going to download the latest release of the SysCLK. And I'm also going to download the latest release of the Tesla menu. And the latest release of NX OVL Loader. I'm also going to have a link to a config.ini file that I already have downloaded, and this is going to have a bunch of default clock speeds for various games. These clock speeds have been determined by members of the homebrew community to be best fit for these certain games, so if you don't want to do the technical stuff and determine what clock speeds are necessary for any given game, just download this config template and it's going to have all of the clock speeds that you need for many games. So now that I've got all these files downloaded, if I just go into my downloads, this is all of them right here. So like I mentioned, this is the config file that I was talking about, and this is going to have a bunch of different profiles for various games. So to start off with getting this all installed on our Switch, we can just put our micro SD card inside of our PC, and as you can see this is mine, I've got my atmosphere folder, my Switch, and all my other stuff on here. So we can just copy the contents of all of these zip files onto our Switch's micro SD card. I'll just start off with this one, and here is the atmosphere folder. So like I said, we can and just copy this straight onto it like that and that is going to be enough to get NX OVL loader installed on our SD card. Next we're going to do the same thing with the Tesla menu, just drag the switch folder straight onto our switch's micro SD card like that. I'm just going to replace the file since I already have this installed, but you probably won't get that message. Next we're going to do the same thing with SysZLK. This time I'm just going to highlight these three folders since we do not really want this readme file on our switch's SD card. And again, just once you've got them highlighted, drag it straight onto it just like this. So once you've got the contents of all of these zip files installed, then we can copy our config file. So we can just copy this normally like any other file, and we're going to go inside of the config folder on our Switch's micro SD card, and then inside of the SysCLK folder, and then we're just going to paste this in here just like that. Alright, so as you can see, my config file is inside of my SysCLK folder, and this is exactly what yours should look like too. If you decide that you want to just make your own, make sure you delete the dot template extension because that just signifies that this is a template, and you really don't want it to be named that, you just want it to be named config.ini. So once we've got all these files copied, that is all the setup that we need on our micro SD card to get this installed. So we can eject our micro SD card and put it back into our Switch now. So I'll meet you on my Switch. Alright, so I'm back on my Switch and I'm booted into Atmosphere. By default, the SysCLK system module is going to be running, so we can just start up our game and it should automatically apply any profiles that we have set. Okay, so I'm inside of Rocket League right now. And to access the SysCLK overlay, we're going to press the L button, the D-pad down, and the right joystick in all at the same time. This is going to bring you into the Tesla overlay menu, and from here you can see all of your overlay modules that you have. So for this video, we're going to be looking at the SysCLK overlay, and as you can see by default it says enabled, so we can either disable this or just keep it enabled, and then below it is where we can change the app profile. So you have all these fields that you can change, but since I'm docked right now, all that really matters to me right now is just the first one. So I've noticed that Rocket League sometimes has pretty bad performance, even when docked, especially in the menus. So let me just show you a little bit about what it's like without any overclocks. Uh, there's a slight delay. It's not, the, it's not the best thing ever. It's not the worst thing ever either. But let's go back into it and let's change the app profile. And I'm going to boost this all the way up boost the GPU all the way up too as well. 
and then boost the memory up all the way. But this is all automatically going to be running at 1600 all the time when it's docked. So let's close out of this and let's see if the performance changed. So the menus are a little bit snappier now, better than it was. And let's just play a quick match and let's see uh, what we can do. Okay, so it's loading the game right now and I'm going to see if there's any performance increases. Okay, so we're about to start the match and let's see if the performance has increased at all. Looks pretty good, just uh, stop right here. Uh, let's move around a little bit. I'm not really going to be trying that hard to win this match, but I'm just going to be, you know, mostly focusing on how the performance is doing. Certain, so far, it seems a lot better than what it was. This game does not usually run very smooth, even in dock mode. And it looks like it's a lot higher than it was before. Yeah, much less lag spikes. Certainly a much more enjoyable experience. I would like to try this on handheld mode later and see how it is. It looks like, it looks like my team scored, even though I wasn't involved in that at all. I'm going to test out an underclock on this and see how that performs. So we can edit the app profile again, again by clicking the R button, D-pad down, and right joystick in. So let's change this all the way to the minimum and just see what that does for us. Yeah, you can notice it already. We didn't even touch the GPU or the memory speed, but you can notice it already. I'm sure if we lowered the GPU speed, that would uh, hinder us a lot more than just lowering the CPU speed. Because this is not a very uh, CPU intensive game. This is mostly just a graphically intensive game. So let's actually try that out. Huh? You know what, let's just try that out now since I failed that. So, go to Edit App Profile and let's... Yeah, this is not going to be good, I can already tell. Yep. Yeah, this is what happens when you underclock your GPU to 76 megahertz. But yeah, certainly uh, not the way that you would want to play Rocket League. But for certain applications like YouTube, this might actually increase your battery life without hurting the performance at all. So I'm going to boost this back up since this is not fun to play like that. Let's put this all the way at the top again. Let's put the GPU all the way at the top again too. I think that is for sure the best way to uh, play this game. It looks like since it was running at such a low uh, frame rate for so long, it's actually taking a, quite a bit of time to get back up to the right speed. Because Rocket League has a lot of optimization to lower the resolution when there's bad frame rate, so it had to undo pretty much all the stuff that we had just caused by underclocking it. Yeah, so here we are back running at uh, maximum clock speeds on the Switch, and this game is looking really nice. So yeah, I think that's pretty much all I have to show you guys for this video. So thank you guys for watching, leave a like, comment, subscribe for more videos like this in the future, and I'll see you next time. Bye.